Coach, you guys have uh, some new names in the in the return units um, from a year ago, some new players. Uh, I guess, you know, what have you seen out of some of those guys who it looks like are going to be taking some of the top snaps, like obviously Micah Pittman with Deuce Band and Sam McCall? No, it, definitely excited that this offseason we were able to add some guys to the roster that we feel like could help us a lot in the return game. Um, you know, starting with Micah. Uh, he's been very consistent throughout the course of you know spring ball and fall camp in terms of fielding punts. Um, he, he's tough. He's aggressive. Uh, he's confident. So I, you know I'm excited about seeing him back there. Um, and then in the kick return uh, unit, kind of the same thing in terms of new faces. Um, you know we got uh, Deuce, um, who, who's taking a lot of reps. Sam. Um, Trey Benson. So I mean, we, we got a, a, a bunch of guys that are that are capable of helping us. Um, and as you said, there's a lot of new faces. So uh, I'm excited to see them be have the opportunity to go out on, on Saturday and finally kind of put it to the test. Derek? Coach, when you looked at film from last year, evaluate self evaluation. Were there things that you saw that you might be able to help your special teams with this year in terms of some of the uh, schemes you're using. Yeah, you know there was there was uh, you know at the end of every season, especially uh, when things don't go as as, as planned in, in a lot of cases, um, there is a lot of critical self evaluation and uh, from everything to how we teach the fundamentals and uh, what we're doing schematically, and then you know after you go through that evaluation, you you, you kind of. Take a step back and say, okay, what did what did we like about what we did, and what can we build upon, and what can we do better? And um, you know, I think uh, you know, we we as a staff devote as much time as as anywhere I've ever been in terms of um, how we allocate time towards special teams. I think uh, we have solved some some things that that uh, we wanted to to make sure that we addressed. Um, you know, both in the return game and the cover coverage uh, with our cover units. So, you know, I'm excited to see Saturday us have the opportunity to now put it on display, uh, you know, against a, a different opponent. Chris? With implementing uh, full speed in the scrimmages with the return game, what kind of feedback did you get from the players about doing that? Because obviously it's something you and Mike want to do, but what did they say after they did it? No, I think th I think they felt like it was, it was helpful from the standpoint that, um, you know, there's a lot of valuable lessons that can be learned in, in a full speed rep uh, that don't necessarily uh, happen um, outside of a of a game setting. So, um, you know, some of those the some of those areas where you may need improvement, they get exposed uh, through those full speed repetitions. And I think our guys understood that, embraced it, and uh, you know, I think we we got better over the last couple of weeks getting more full speed special teams work in the scrimmages for sure. Before you got here, Coach Fuller was discussing the defensive line and just how much the depth has changed since you guys first arrived. I guess for you, what have you seen uh, in terms of growth from the defensive end group from you know, the first day you were here to where you are now going in year three? Yeah, I mean, uh, without hearing exactly what Coach Fuller said, I mean, uh, it, it's something that, that it, you know, it took some time to build the depth to the, to the place of which it is now. Um, the biggest thing is just not having significant drop off uh, when you're rotating players throughout the course of practice and then as we'll see on, on Saturday throughout the course of a game. Um, you know, I feel very confident right now we, we have six guys that are, that are repping and rotating in the defensive end spot. Um, and I feel very confident that, that we'll be able to execute at a high level regardless of who's in the game. Um, you know, Derek McClendon, Jared Verse, Dennis Briggs, Leonard Warner, Pat Payton, Byron Turner, all those guys are, are, are taking reps. They're all at a different place in their career. You know, Pat and Byron are, are redshirt freshmen. Um, Leonard's been here, Leonard and Dennis have been here since before we got here. Uh, same with Derek. So, um, you know, they're all at a, at a different stage in terms of their development, but um, that depth that, that we uh, aspired to early on and, and when we first got here as a staff is starting to take shape. Excellent. Odell's got a bunch of old dudes starting for him. Randy's got a bunch of old dudes starting for him back end with you know Adam and Marcus got a whole bunch of old dudes back there but you've got a guy that you know is coming from the FCS level Dennis is coming off an injury Derek limited sort of action what have you kind of seen in practice that does make you feel confident about what they have and is it not so much about how ready they'll be Saturday is it more about where they can be in October November well you know I'll kind of take one guy at a time in terms of that like Jared Verse yes he is coming from a different level um, it is going to be a change in terms of his week to week competition that he sees but some of our best competition is what we see every day at practice, and and he absolutely looks like um, 
he belongs in every way, shape, and form uh, at, at this level. Um, you know, we, we obviously anticipated that uh, when he came in, but uh, he's had a really good, he had a really good spring. He's had a really good fall camp. Um, and, and I look forward to seeing what he can what he can do uh, this year for us. You know, Dennis uh, made the transition uh, from playing more inside to playing more defensive end, but he's, he also had a very good uh, fall camp. So uh, even though there's probably a few more unknowns at the defensive end spot, uh, I feel really good about the way that's going to look, um, not just this week, but for the next, you know, for the season going forward. When you're putting together coverage units, um, I mean, I'm sure you're looking for the best athletes or you know whatever criteria you have. Do do guys sometimes come to you and and want to either be elevated or compete at those positions beyond just the the freshmen who are just trying to get on the field? Yeah, you know, I, I, there's a lot of times that guys come and and they express their desires to want to be on on different special teams phases um, because a lot of guys, especially those those backup transitional guys. They know it's their opportunity to travel or to get on the bus, so to speak, um, is making sure that they have a role on on special teams. So that happens pretty frequently in terms of guys coming to, to ask what they can what they can do or what kind of role that they could play. Uh, in terms of the cover units, um, you know, every everything that we do, and you guys are at obviously a lot of the, the practices, we do a lot of competitive drill work. And um, you know, through that competition and through that competitive competitive work, uh, we're able to, to get a really a pretty solid evaluation of who we feel like gives us the best opportunity to be successful on those units. And, uh, you know, we, we kind of make those decisions based off that. Um, and then obviously what's going on in practice, both on the offensive side and defensive side. Like, to me, it all matters. You know, if I, if I feel like a guy is really showing up offensively or really showing up well defensively, it makes me think, well, maybe I need to create a spot or a role for them on special teams, um, and and it all kind of it all kind of works together, you know, from the standpoint of everybody has an opportunity every day to showcase what they are able to do to help us, and I try to take all of that into account as we make these decisions. Uh, when Ryan uh, Ryan talked last week about changing his approach a little bit, um, going to more I guess more of a two-step approach. When um, and I know the kickers kind of sometimes have their own people to help them and they have their own ideas. Um, did you does he come to you about that or does do you just see it like once after he's implemented it and, and what do you think that's done for him? Well, you know, kick, kicking is a little unique in, in that regard because a lot of these guys have personal trainers and coaches that they've worked with their their whole careers and they'll get some off season work with them. Um, you know, in terms of that. Uh, Ryan will communicate and share some of the things that he's working on, and then it's our job to give the most, the best feedback we can. I try not to clutter him or any of our kickers, for that matter, with too much information because, like any of us who, who've who've played golf, if you have too many swing thoughts, then all of a sudden you can't perform. You know, so I I try I trust him in, in terms of what he's trying to to get accomplished. Um, and then if there's something that needs that I see or one of the coaches on our staff sees that needs to be tweaked or adjusted, we'll, we'll address that from there. But, um, you know, he's, he's hit the ball well. Um, you know, I think his contact has been, been really good throughout the course of, of this fall camp. So um, there's really no need for me to, to tweak anything with him right now, as a, except for the occasional miss hit. We may talk about why it happened. That's one. I know you're married and you have a family and they make you very happy, but, but professionally, will there be anything that will make you more excited than to see one of these kick units, whether it's punt or kick, really bust something off? Yeah, no, it, it, I, uh, that's a long time overdue. Uh, you know, I was actually kind of uh, thinking about that last night driving home, just, um, you know, you kind of get caught and, and you, you know, kind of drift off in your train of thought, almost ran a red light. Um, but um, I, just because our guy, we're so close. You know, and I know, you know, to, to a casual observer, just off the television copy of, of watching a game, it's hard to tell that at times. Um, because to, to have a kick return for a touchdown, there's a reason why they're infrequent. You know, a lot of things have to happen. You got to get the right kick. You got to get everyone blocked. Everyone's got to execute their assignment. Then you got a guy, have to have a guy with some instincts that's running with the ball that, that can make it happen. Um, and we've been so close on so many different occasions where when you pause the tape, you see a seam there, you think you're going to hit it, 
and then for whatever reason it doesn't happen that way. Um, so yeah, I'd be I'd be thrilled to death if you know when, when that that opportunity presents itself. And uh, our guys have worked really hard at it, and, and they do take a lot of pride in what we're doing on on special teams. Uh, so I'm hoping that that. Um, they start seeing some rewards for all the, the hard work that they're putting into it, for sure. Anything else? We're good? Awesome. Thank awesome. You. Thank you, guys.